Greetings, I'm Jonathan, Polygon Flow's Community Director for Dash, our next-gen Unreal Engine plugin that makes creating environments like this a total breeze. Today I'm demonstrating a mount site inspired by reference photos from Camp Shelby in Mississippi. MOUNT is an acronym that stands for Military Operations in Urban Terrain. This style of architecture is found mostly on training sites or airsoft courses, but today we're using it to demonstrate how effective Dash can be in creating realistic training environments for real-time simulators using Unreal Engine 5. I've worked in the sim industry before, and this level of detail would have taken me a long time. With Dash, the scene creation time was reduced to hours instead of days, letting me focus on building the world to look like a one-to-one -one representation of the real thing in short order. The buildings themselves were modeled outside of Unreal Engine. If you'd like to work with them yourself, you can download them from the link in the description. The driving force behind this environment is Dash and the speed at which it allows me to create open worlds. Look at the difference when all of the Dash created assets are hidden. I'm going to recreate this environment, but leave the buildings in place. Then work with Dash to flesh out the world so that you can follow along with me. Let's start by typing Terrain into the Dash prompt bar, then select the Terrain tool. There's a wide variety of options to work with here. I'm going to adjust the terrain so that it's large enough to fill the visible world. Other settings that I'll adjust will change the density of the UVs and the height of the noise on the terrain. Once I'm happy with the final look, I'll convert the terrain to a static mesh using Dash. Converting the terrain to a static mesh significantly improves performance. Then open the content browser and drag an appropriate material to form the bedrock of the environment. Inside the Edit Material panel, I'll adjust the normal, contrast, brightness, and saturation of the surface to match the type of soil that I want to use for the world. I'll move on to adding the main roadway that traverses the mount site. I'll type Draw into Dash and begin drawing out and adjusting a curve until I'm happy with the general shape of the road path that I'm laying out. Then type Road into Dash and select the Road tool. From there, I'll add the curve to the tool so the road appears, then adjust the density so it's got enough geometry to follow the general shape of the curve, and adjust the width to represent the size of a typical Mount Village roadway. After I'm happy with how it looks, I'll add the terrain to the Road tool so that the road conforms itself to the shape of the terrain. Then I'll adjust the border sink so the road has a sharp edge, and use the sink option to make it rise above the ground just a little. Once this is done, I'll adjust the UVs and then find a material to add to the road that'll work for demonstrating a quick concrete layout. Then open the content browser and search for a concrete material from Megascans that will work well here. With the concrete material on the road, I need to adjust it to get rid of the bluish tint that it has by default. So I'll desaturate it using Dash's material editor and change the tiling to fine tune the appearance of the roadway. Now I can scroll down and enable the dirt option, which procedurally generates a dirt texture on the road surface that'll carefully match to the existing dirt around the road. By adjusting the dirt tiling, intensity, roughness, and other variables, I can break up the surface of the road to hide the obvious texture repetition. To make the terrain more realistic, we need grass. In the content browser, I've selected Megascan's grass clumps and held control while dragging them onto the terrain to scatter them quickly across the ground. After playing with some scale and density settings, the next step is to select the road mesh and enable object masking so the grass doesn't grow in the roadway. Object masking takes a moment or two to calculate, and the grass disappears and we're left with a clean road. To make the grass more interesting, I've scattered clover and tall meadow grass as well, using similar techniques to break up the environment. Laying down several types of ground cover will help with breaking up repeating mesh elements and introduce believability to the world. And with Dash, it doesn't really take much time at all, and every aspect of the scatter process is procedural and can be changed at any point. Because Dash is procedural, you can select an existing Dash created asset and open it at any point to adjust it how you see fit. The last bit of surface scattering we need to focus on is rocks, which will make the road far less uniform and way more interesting. 
I've opened the content browser and control dragged Megascans rocks onto my already selected road mesh. After adjusting some settings, I've got a decent bit of uniform rock scatter, which I can break up using the noise mask option. One of the best parts of Dash is being able to experiment and play with settings because of its procedural nature. Never feel like you have to commit to anything. You can adjust any setting at any point and get the exact look and feel that you're going for. To break it up further, I've scattered the same rocks over the same roadway again and changed the scaling so that it favors larger rocks. Then I'll mask it out so that the large rock clumps only appear infrequently on the roadway. This breaks up the uniformity of the pebbles and gives it a very convincing lifelike appearance which the road would have from tanks or other vehicles bringing rocks onto the fresh pavement from the terrain surrounding it. Object masking works for smaller objects too, like this Megascan's fire hydrant which prevents grass from spawning next to it in the world. As the hydrant moves, the grass procedurally disappears based on the proximity of the hydrant to the terrain. Now let's add some trees to flush out the world a bit more. I've opened the content browser and now I'm choosing another Unreal project to pull trees from. With Dash, you can grab assets from any Unreal project you've tagged using Dash's AI tagging system, so I'm saving myself a ton of time by reusing trees that I've made for another project. With the basic scatter laid down, I'm creating an Unreal box object and scaling it to encompass the area that I want the trees to grow in, then applying a transparent material to them so they're invisible, then assigning that to the object mask for the scatter so the trees only grow in the areas defined by the boxes. This can be adjusted in real time too, if you want to change the position of the boxes at any point. To get the sandbags in place, I'm dragging one from the Megascans library into the world then creating a gentle curve with a low amount of interpolation so I can easily adjust the points if needed. Once I'm happy with the curve, I'll type path into dash and select path scatter, then add the curve to the tool and select the sandbags and add them as well. The scaling needs to be adjusted to look like a sandbag wall, as does the density. Path scatter takes the input assets and distributes them along a curve, which is great for building fences and other physical barriers. One of the really nice aspects of Dash is that anything that you do is taken into account, so I can adjust the endpoints of the curb to clean up the final appearance and make the sandbags stop colliding with the buildings. Let's add even more detail to bring it to life. I'll draw more curves to lay out where I want weeds to grow, approximating where they would be most likely to thrive in the world. Then I'll find some weeds in the Megascans library and hold control and drag them into the world, and scatter them on the selected paths. The scaling here needs adjusting, as does the density and rotation, along with a few other settings like the width and mask removal, which will produce a very lifelike feel to the scattered weeds. If I want more, I can always create new curves with Dash and add them to the tool at any point. To place the utility poles in the world, I've selected the road curve and held control while dragging the mesh into the world to scatter it on the curve. This automatically creates a path scatter, which needs some adjustments to make a convincing procedural placement. I'll adjust the z-direction override to get the poles oriented in the same direction, then adjust the width so that Dash creates two copies of the poles for each side of the road. Then adjust the remove mask parameter to randomize where the poles appear, and adjust the seed parameter until I've got a look that I'm happy with. You could do this manually with Dash, but you'd also lose a lot of the ability to adjust the position of the assets based on the location of the curve. The utility poles need cables added to them, and Dash has a tool for that, aptly named the Cable Tool. This tool will take a bit of setup. I've placed hidden spheres on top of the ceramic insulators of each utility pole, so I can connect them one by one to ensure that the power lines are linear and look realistic. It takes a minute or two, but the end result is solid and true to life. If you want to push your simulated environments to the next level, Dash brings fidelity and performance to real-world training solutions that previously took entire teams to accomplish, including specialized artists that you might only find in the game industry. Once all of the cables are placed, I'll adjust the radius and gravity parameters to get a realistic look and feel. 
Dash makes this super simple, and like all tools in Dash, it's also procedural and can be adjusted at any point. The cable endpoints can also be adjusted too. I can also add a material to the cable, which I'll adjust using the Dash Material Editor until I'm happy with its appearance. I'll touch more on material editing in a few, but let's move on to grid scattering and show how it can be used to create another aspect of a training environment. Moving on to grid scatter, I'll lay out a fitness course with Omegascan's car tire by dragging the tire into the environment, placing it in an open patch of dirt, then creating a new grid scatter with Dash. Adding the tire to the grid origin and as the input mesh, you get an instant grid of the tire repeating itself. This can be adjusted with a variety of different options in grid scatter, including scaling, rotation, height, etc. Until I'm happy with the final look, which requires a bit of adjustment but ultimately significantly less than the amount of time it would have taken to place these assets manually. Let's showcase how to take these buildings and give them some character with decal scatter. Prompting Dash to open decal scatter, I'm selecting all of my decals that I want to apply to the buildings, and now I've loaded them into the tool. I'll cut to the buildings that need detailing and select the first one and add it to the tool. This automatically applies a large assortment of the selected decals to the building, but we can go further with it by limiting how far the decals will apply based on the height of the building, and also prevent the decals from creating stretching by adjusting the depth. Adjusting various other parameters results in a really nice looking random assortment of battle scars and damage that would accrue over the years that this site existed. We can also add other buildings to the scatter, and change the max count of the decals so it equally applies decals to all of the selected buildings. It's a very versatile tool that should open up a lot of customization for you, like everything in Dash. It's totally procedural too. I was also able to get the precise color that I wanted for my materials using the Dash Material Editor, which made it very simple to get a quick material change when I needed it. Similar to what I did earlier with the road by adding dirt, I can also basically change any aspect of this material inside of Dash entirely procedurally. Another aspect of Dash is the content browser that lets you load in assets from other Unreal Engine projects that you've tagged on your machine using Dash. This fence I'm using was originally designed for a recreation of Deus Ex's Hell's Kitchen. But because I tagged the project in Dash, I can load the assets into this environment seamlessly. This is a huge time saver, especially if you've got a lot of additional content outside of your main project that you're working in. If you'd like the buildings to work with for your own projects, you'll find them in the description so that you can follow along with this Dash tutorial. I'm Jonathan, Polygon Flow's Community Director for Dash, and I thank you for watching. Be sure to let us know what you think on our Discord server and in the comments section below. If you want to learn more about Dash, also be sure to check out our library of how-to videos featuring deep dives into various aspects of the tools that Dash offers. See you next time!